a curious teen comes face to face with a mummy. There's still skin on her face. And is haunted by an evil beast from an ancient world. For years, it pursues him without mercy. This thing was coming after me like a, a creature would stalk prey. Can he escape from its clutches before it claims his soul? This entity was more powerful than any one person can handle. It was hell on earth. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. On the north shore of Seneca Lake lies a small, sleepy town. It's the kind of place where families live in the same house for generations. The community that I grew up in it was a smaller community. It was a nice place to grow up as a kid because you could ride your bikes up and down our road without fear of traffic, and you had open fields for baseball. We lived in my grandmother's house at the time, my mom's mom. 14-year-old Caleb Weaver lives with his parents, Chris and Susan. My childhood was pretty typical. I mean, it had its ups and downs, but you know, it's pretty happy for the most part. Caleb's mother wishes to remain anonymous due to her occupation. Caleb had a small group of friends from the time he was little all the way through high school. He was involved in a lot of activities. He was in swim club, and he played trombone in a band. Morning, Dad. Hey, son. Caleb, you better get going. Don't you have a, a field trip today? Yeah, that sounds boring. Boring or not, don't be late. He was your typical teenager. Thanks. See you later, Mom. Have a good day. I think we were the basic, well-rounded family. But in the spring of 1997, Caleb's happy life is disrupted. That afternoon, Caleb's class visits a local museum showcasing recently acquired Egyptian artifacts dating back to 2000 BC. Welcome to the Egyptian gallery. There are many priceless antiquities here, so please be careful. Follow me this way. Don't come pumping into things. You're going to break that base. Oh. As soon as we got in there, I just felt oddly drawn to the exhibit and these artifacts, and everything else seemed to just tune itself out. As I'm looking at everything, I felt kind of separated from everyone. Egyptian preserved according to custom. In short, a mummy. We believe she was a priestess who served one of Egypt's major deities. I see how well preserved she is. She's got the fingernails and the bones, the teeth. Yeah, yeah. And her teeth are still intact. The mummy was rumored to be a priestess who worshiped a volatile and aggressive god and the deity may still be protecting her in the afterlife. Here's some artifacts we found in the priestess's tomb. The unwrapped head of the mummy, it was pretty intense. It was the whole face. The face was intact, everything. Kind of looked like something out of a horror movie. Suddenly, Caleb is struck by an overwhelming sensation. Everything blurred. I was just trapped in my own little world. I 
don't even know if anybody else even realized, um, you know, what I was experiencing. It got so intense that it was unbearable. As soon as we left that gallery, I just felt a lot of relief. I was just glad to be out of there. That evening, Caleb still can't shake the unnerving experience. As soon as I got home, I started to feel that same uneasiness that I felt when we were at this gallery. So, was it boring? No. <laughs> no, uh, actually, uh... There was this mummy, a priestess. There's still skin on her face. And I looked right through her eyes. She didn't have any, but for a second it felt like she was looking right through me. And all of a sudden I couldn't breathe. He was scared after visiting the mummy exhibit. We attribute it to the fact that this is Caleb. From a very young age, he always had very deep interests in different topics. When he got his mind onto something, it was very hard to get him to think about anything else. So when he first started talking about the mummy, we kind of said to ourselves, OK, this is Caleb's new obsession. Are you all right, honey? I'm sure he's fine. You're probably just a little freaked out. You saw a real mummy for the first time. That can be a little scary. My parents, they kind of blew it off as I saw a uh, dead body. A oh, mummy, you know, it's, that's going to be a little frightening. And uh, that's how they tried to rationalize it. But Caleb finds little comfort in his parents' reassurances. I just got the dreadful feeling that I was in harm's way. In a small town in upstate New York, middle school student Caleb Weaver has an eerie encounter with an ancient Egyptian mummy. Here's some artifacts we found in the priestess's tomb. It felt, you know, like something was there kind of looking at me. I felt very singled out. When Caleb returned that day from the field trip at school, he was very quiet. He did talk about seeing this mummy exhibit, and he didn't like it. There's still skin on her face, and all of a sudden, I couldn't breathe. That night. <laughs> we believe she was a priestess who served one of Egypt's major deities. The mummy was rumored to be a priestess who worshipped an angry god who may still be guarding her in the afterlife. I 
see these glowing green eyes and it just lets out this low guttural growl. And I just remember being absolutely terrified and I heard the heavy footsteps of this thing as it made its way across my bedroom. The next morning, Caleb doesn't know what to think. The nightmare felt so real. What was going on in your room last night? All that ruckus? You heard it? You heard the... the growling? Right after he went to see this mummy exhibit, that's when he started saying he heard things. He thought he could hear something breathing upstairs in his room. What's going on, Caleb? It was some sort of animal, a monster. I don't know what it was, but I do know it wanted to hurt me. I told him everything I saw and experienced. Caleb, you're probably just upset from seeing that mummy at the museum. You probably heard something, but this house is old. It makes all kinds of strange noises. My dad, he's dismissing it as, you know, I'm, I'm too old to be experiencing, you know, the boogeyman or monsters. No. No, this was real. Its eyes, they were glowing. His dad and I chalked it up to his imagination. Maybe it was just a very bad dream. Forget it. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Caleb's always been a very unique individual, and he seems to experience emotions very strongly. We just assumed that if we were patient and let him work his way through it, it would be the end of it. My parents said it was probably just a nightmare, but when you wake up, you know that distinction. I know it wasn't that. <laughs> Caleb finds himself in a constant state of fear, but chooses to suffer in silence. I did have a few close friends, but I never spoke about any of this. My parents dismissed me, so, you know, are my friends just gonna dismiss it too? I felt very isolated, so I just kept everything to myself. I didn't know I had really any other option at that point other than, you know, just to try to suck it up and deal with it. Hey, so, uh, Caleb, who was that girl you were trying to talk to today? Yeah, because that girl definitely <laughs> shut you down. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, my gosh. She didn't want anything to do with you, man. She kind of annoyed, honestly. Like, next time, I wouldn't even talk to her. All right. I think I'm going to try. Hey, go for it. Go for it, dude. <laughs> Please, be my guest. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to go. We're going to be late for soccer. Yeah. All right. All so right. I'll see you later. Right, see you later. See ya. A couple weeks after this started, I came home from the school bus. I'd left my keys inside, so I was locked out of the house. The only way to get to the inside of the house was to go through the basement. The moment I walked in the basement, I was creeped out by it.
I paused for just a moment and I heard uh, this whispering. And when I turned to look in the corner, I saw the eyes and you know, I saw it's the head and the scales of this thing. Here lies the mortal remains of an ancient Egyptian preserved according to custom. We believe she was a priestess who served one of Egypt's major deities. Ever since Caleb Weaver encountered an ancient Egyptian mummy on a school field trip in upstate New York, he's been having disturbing nightmares that feel all too real. The mummy is thought to have been a priestess who worshipped an aggressive and animalistic god, and it's now protecting her in the afterlife. This thing is just constantly just trying to terrorize and torment me. I just tried coping with that sense of dread. One day, Caleb accidentally locks himself out of his house and is forced to go through the basement. As soon as I started walking down into this basement, it looked like a crypt. Where you just, you know you're not supposed to be there. This is somebody else's a domain. And when I turned to look in the corner, I saw this presence again. It was crocodile in appearance and partly mutated with a person and just very, very massive and very menacing. And I was absolutely terrified. This thing was coming after me like a creature would stalk prey. I ran out of there as, as fast as I could. At this point, I, I knew it was something paranormal. I didn't know what exactly was going on, but you know, I knew that this thing was targeting me, and it was not friendly. His parents think Caleb has an overactive imagination until his mother notices an alarming change in her son's demeanor. He did begin to have trouble sleeping. He did become very frustrated. Caleb, is everything all right? Do you want to talk? When I got home, the door was locked, and I didn't have my keys on me. He had been left home alone, and he had gotten very upset about something. But when I went down the stairs to the basement, there was this monster. The more Caleb describes this frightening encounter, the more Susan suspects she knows why he senses something in the house. I, I think I understand this house our family home, a lot of bad things have happened. <clears throat> like um, my father, he was a very angry man. When I was a child, my father was a very abusive alcoholic. There were many instances of domestic violence. When I moved back into the home as an adult, I would experience a memory a flashback of a, of a violent episode in the house. You're worthless. Get out of here! I thought that the house maybe had some residual energy from experiences when I was young. But Susan has no idea that her troubled childhood is unrelated to what Caleb is going through. I didn't see anything for a couple of weeks but I always felt this thing there. I would avoid being in the house by myself. Mom? 
Dad? Hello? I started getting very sick to my stomach. It was a, a very overwhelming sensation, like I was just having an anxiety attack. For more of haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. For months, Caleb Weaver has been tormented by a mysterious and horrific monster that resembles an ancient Egyptian god. I just felt a searing pain. Felt like someone put my arm in a vice. I didn't think uh, it would. It was gonna let go. My arm felt like it was on fire, and I realized I was bleeding. It was clearly a bite mark. Caleb keeps the assault a secret from his parents. I hid it because nobody believed what I was going through. I'm the only one seeing this thing and experiencing what's going on. I felt just helpless. With nowhere to turn, Caleb spirals into darkness. It did get worse. He did become more depressed and had what? I referred to as an emotional breakdown. <laughs> we got Caleb counseling because we were very worried about him. After a while, Caleb pulled away from us. He did not share what was going on. Soon after graduating from high school, Caleb flees his childhood home, hoping to escape the monster that has terrorized him for years. I moved out of the house for no other reason than just to escape this. Caleb eventually lands in Glen Burnie, Maryland, hundreds of miles away, where he finds work as a security guard at a local mall. I started actually having a normal life without uh, being terrorized every night. And he meets his girlfriend, Laura. How was your day? Other than some trouble making skateboarders, I was all right. Caleb opened up with me about his childhood. I was very supportive when he told me all of his experiences, because I did always believe that there is something else out there. Laura, she's very open. You can talk to her about anything. She's caring and sweet, and that's what really attracted me to her. That really strengthened our relationship. You know, she's fully accepting of it. You know, there's there's no doubt in her eyes. You hungry? I can eat. I'm gonna make some dinner. Come on. In his new life, Caleb forms another important relationship with a co-worker named John. So how do you like working as a security guard? Oh, I love it. Yeah? It's a great job. Pays the bills, you know? It does pay the bills. 
I started working with a company that he was a uh, supervisor for, and uh, we just became close friends ever since. There's just, there's just one lady that just always gives me trouble. Um, blue cardigan? <laughs> I, I know who you mean. Said. Oh, enough said. Enough uh, said. I know exactly who you're talking about. She's interesting. She's a character. I've been meaning to ask you about those four scars on your arm. What happened? Uh. The conversation just kind of got brought up, and he was very vague about it. Hey, I can't get this flashlight to work. Do you, um, believe in the paranormal? That creatures can exist that aren't from this world? Actually, I do. I went through a terrible experience. And for a while, this thing made my life a living hell. When I was a kid, I went into the woods and came across this old building. In one of the corners was this old book. I picked it up. It was a satanic Bible. A demon attached itself to John that day. <laughs> and he was eventually freed by a deliverance minister. John later became his assistant. Amen. It tortured me for years. And I had no idea what to do until I, I met this man named Bill Bean. And he delivered me from it. I was studying under the minister that delivered me to help others in dealing with the supernatural. What about you? <clears throat> yeah. Growing up, I went through a lot of stuff. Caleb didn't really talk about it much. I didn't want to push it too far, just given what I had went through. You're very reclusive. You don't want to talk to anybody about it for fear of them thinking that you're crazy. I think we're going to need some more wood for this fire, huh? In December 2013, Caleb returns home for the holidays. Oh, it's so good to see you. Good to see you, too, Mom. It was nice to have him home, and I enjoyed seeing him. Welcome home, son. <laughs> Good to see you. That night, Caleb sleeps in his old bedroom for the first time since he escaped his tormentor years ago. The name that I, I kept hearing over and over was Zobek. And as soon as I typed it in, everything clicked. The name came up with this ancient Egyptian deity, took the form of a crocodile, was worshiped by the ancient Egyptians oh as a protection entity to those that worshiped him. According to Egyptian lore, the dead enlisted the help of Sobek to protect them as they traveled through the afterlife. Sobek could be guarding the mummy that Caleb encountered on his school field trip so many years ago. And now, Caleb believes Sobek views him as a potential threat. 
took me as a threat and basically targeted me from that point on. This thing that had terrorized me for years, it's no longer a mystery. I knew this thing that I was going up against. But he has no idea what to do about it. When he was a teenager, Caleb Weaver was tormented by a monster he couldn't identify. I completely started shutting down. I ended up moving out of the house, and I moved out of the state for no other reason than just to escape this. Years later, while home for the holidays, Caleb reawakens the once dormant beast and learns his name. This thing was an Egyptian god. I knew what it was now, Sobek. Oh my god. It is widely believed that Sobek was a dark god who took the form of a vicious crocodile, protecting the dead in the afterlife. felt a weight come right onto me, like I was going to just fall right through the floor. A few days later, Caleb returns to the Maryland home he shares with his girlfriend, Laura. Hi, baby. Welcome home. Not now. As soon as he walked in the door, I knew that there was something wrong with him. Is everything OK? What are you looking for? I can help you. I don't want your help, Laura. <sighs> This anger that he was displaying to that level was not him. It was definitely like looking at a stranger. I started to become afraid all the time because I didn't know what was going to set him off next. Got the uh, chicken nuggets. Laura isn't the only one who notices a drastic change in Caleb. John is one of Caleb's best friends. Look at that weasel. He needs to be taught a lesson. Before Caleb went up to New York for the holidays, he was a fun-loving person. He came back, and there was a lot more hostility in him. I don't, I don't think he's up to anything. Who cares? Look at him. Uh, he needs to know who runs things around here. Hey, dirtbag, get over here. What did I say? Get over here now! He was going out looking for problems. He just, he wanted to assert his dominancy. what I do? Look, I'm just minding my own business. All right, that's it. Now I'm gonna kick your sorry ass in the next freaking month! He wanted to hurt somebody. John thinks he understands. When he was younger, John himself was tormented by a demon. Now he recognizes the same disturbing signs in his friend Caleb. It was Caleb physically, but you know, mentally and spiritually, it just wasn't. I knew something was up, and dealing with my experiences, it led me to believe one thing, that he was possessed. Desperate to help, John and Laura decide to voice their concerns. I didn't start to think it was paranormal until John and I sat down and discussed it. I believed that something had come home with him. I had no idea what to do to help him. I was desperate. Hey, what's going on? 
What happened to you when you went back home? You haven't been acting like yourself. Caleb, sometimes I'm scared of you. Scared of me? Why? I think something followed you from New York. It's latched onto you, and I think it's the reason for the way you're acting and the things that are happening. Since his own experience with a demon, John has learned to free others from possession. I want to perform a deliverance on you. To break the attachment of this evil and to rid you of it once and for all. <sighs> okay, let's do it. I was open to breaking this attachment of this thing and getting rid of it. At that point, I just said, you know, I have to do something now before this gets out of hand. It's, it's just going to get worse from here. John employs specific prayers to command the demonic entity to leave Caleb's body. By the power of his cross, his blood, and his resurrection, I bind you, Satan, the spirits, <laughs> powers, and forces of darkness, netherworld and the evil forces of nature. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the power of his cross. The spiritual warfare prayer is used when you're going to battle the demonic entities. It's calling upon God to send down his angels and be your protection and fight for you. It was overwhelming. I was put into a haze. I only remember bits and pieces here and there of things. Everything just seemed like a blur. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. At this point, I started becoming fearful. It's stirred up. It's out. You know, I've got to do this. Otherwise, things are going to get really, really bad. Get out of here, Laura. Go. John told me to leave because Caleb had threatened him, and he didn't want me to get hurt. I was terrified. I was afraid that something bad was going to happen. <sighs> In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the power of his blood, his cross, and his resurrection, I bind you, Satan, the spirits, the netherworld, and the evil forces of the world. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. An ancient Egyptian god named Sobek has possessed Caleb Weaver, taking control of his body and mind. And the evil forces of nature. Caleb's friend John attempts to perform a deliverance to free him from this evil. You don't want to do that! It freaked me out, but I didn't want this entity to know that it scared me. If you show fear, it can just take you over. It will completely devour you. And the evil forces of the John, this is me. You gotta stop or someone's gonna die. Is Caleb all right? This thing is too powerful. I need help. I've never experienced strength like this. It was a supernatural strength that could not have come from a human being. John admits defeat and calls in the only man he knows who can help, his mentor. Bill Bean is an ordained deliverance minister who specializes in freeing those possessed by the supernatural. He saved John once, and now he is here to save Caleb. Caleb was under demonic possession. Caleb was exposed to something in his early childhood years. Some sort of doorway was open, somehow, some way, for these demonic forces to come onto him. 
Are you ready? Let's do it. As a safety measure, Bill restrains Caleb. My biggest fears were that Caleb could possibly die from this or kill one of us. After we handcuffed him and put him in the chair, it was like a light switch. It was total night and day. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the most high oh, rests in the shadow of the almighty. I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge. Truly, he will say, you will not be afraid of the darkness. Caleb's facial features were actually changing. This demon inside of him had this sinister grin. You will not fear pestilence and dogs in the darkness that destroys in midday. By the mighty power of the mighty name of Yahweh, I cast you out and command you to leave. And I literally felt the demon leaving him through his mouth, and he was delivered right then and there. I knew it was out of me. I felt lighter. I felt peaceful. I remember just breaking down and, and crying. I felt that intense feeling of relief when you wake out of the world's most horrible dream. When I looked into his eyes, I actually saw Caleb. I wasn't afraid of him anymore. In April 2014, Caleb and Laura marry. The fact that we survived this, I know that we're going to be together for the rest of our lives. If a possession did not tear us apart, that there's nothing in this world that can tear Caleb and I apart. Since the final deliverance, Caleb no longer fears his tormentor. I don't have anything to be afraid of anymore. And that's an incredibly powerful feeling. But I feel like I'm always gonna have some type of a connection with this ancient Egyptian deity. There's nothing I can say to make anybody believe. It's your own little hell on earth. I don't wish anyone to go through it, but I know what's real. I know it's not real. And I'm not alone. <laughs>